With six minutes to go before the closing bell rings this morning, both the Atlanta Fed chief, Dan, Dennis Lockhart, rather, and the Chicago Federal Reserve president, Charles Evans, suggested they could support a rate hike in December as long as the economic data do not disappoint. If the data look good, we can have a rate tightening. You know what? Stanley Fisher, the vice chair of the Fed, said the same thing yesterday. But with third quarter earnings in full swing, is it time for investors to move the Fed aside for the moment and focus elsewhere? With me now is Patrick Kayser, Brandywine Global Managing Director and Portfolio Manager. Eight billion in assets under management. Uh, the Fed is going to do what the Fed's going to do and simply say, if, if, we will do it if the data look good. Yeah, you know, then they'll find one data point that doesn't look good. What are you focusing on with your client's money? Yeah, right now we're focusing on what's cheap, and we are focusing, as you say, earnings season is about to kick off, so we're looking forward on that. You know, the last few months for value investing, and really the whole year for value investing, has been terrible. Growth has been beating value. In the third quarter, an index called the Dow Jones High Momentum Index was up 11%. Mm -hmm. So value has not been the place to be. If I had a fantasy team, my, my players, my companies have not been the ones being picked. But we think earnings are going to come in better than expectations. We think the economy, both in the U.S. and abroad, is probably doing a little bit better than people fear. And so once we X out energy, we think earnings are actually going to be pretty good. Okay, X out energy. Energy, by the way, is the worst performing sector today. We do have that yep. just floundering once again. We are asking everybody who comes on the show, you know, as, as the debt ceiling clock starts to tick down, November 5th is the day Treasury says is the day we, we run out of ability to pay our debt obligations. Uh, what has the most power to affect our portfolios? Is it the Federal Reserve? Is it hitting the debt ceiling? Is it earnings? Which one? Right. Well, clearly, if, we, if, they, if they don't resolve the debt ceiling issue, that's going to hit portfolios. But I think the near term thing that's going to matter the most is indeed earnings. Um, you know, as I said, earnings X energy probably going to be actually up this quarter. A lot of people think, oh, you know, earnings are going to be down. Well, you take out oil prices falling, which is great for consumers, and earnings are actually going to be up. Revenues are actually going to be up. So we're looking at commentary. What are people saying about China? When it comes to oil companies specifically, we think prices are probably bottoming here. Obviously, today is a bad day. Okay. We like companies like BP in that sector. But really, when we look at other That's companies, an banks sector, kick it obviously. off. Citigroup yeah. is this week. I mean, you, you yeah. just you just you said, know, Patrick, is, that uh, you, you just said that that the, the names that you pick for your your baseball team or your your major league team are not the ones other people would be picking. We have up on the screen BP, which you mentioned, also Citigroup, which reports yep. earnings this week and GM General Motors. Yeah, all exceptionally cheap. You know, BP, 7% yield, very cheap uh, if you believe oil prices are going to go up. Citigroup is like, exceptionally cheap, below tangible book value at this point. You know, people are pricing it like it's worth an, a, you know, a liquidation value almost. Um, very low PE on that one. And then General Motors, no one wants to give them credit for anything that's going on. That's one of the cheapest stocks in the world right now, probably less than seven times earnings. They keep reiterating that China's going to be okay for them, that margins are going to hold up. No one believes it. So when you look out over the next two to three years, I don't know what the fourth quarter is going to bring for these stocks. I think it's going to be good because expectations are so low. But when I look out over two to three years, these stocks are tremendously undervalued. In most cases, I think more than 50 percent upside from here. Patrick, what would you simply avoid? So we'd avoid companies like uh, the utility sector generally looks pretty expensive. There's a lot of consumer staples out there that look pretty expensive. I hate to name companies I don't like, but one stock I don't understand right now is Campbell's Soup. You know, I read a report out this morning, only 30% of analysts recommend Campbell's Soup. It's trading at 20 times earning. It's not growing very fast. I'm not just picking on Campbell's. It's just an example of a number of that kind of company that are trading at very high valuations with very low growth. And there's better opportunities out there right now better opportunities. And remember, City is reporting later this week. You like it right now. We'll, we'll, we'll see exactly what happens. But Patrick, it's great to see you. Great. Thank you for having me. Patrick Kayser, Brandywine, Global Managing Director and Portfolio Manager, saying, look, don't get caught up in what energy is doing. By the way, oil is down 4%.